this week it's great to have uh, a couple of uh, brand side, client side uh, guests, and also uh, Lydia Smith joining us, who uh, was uh, voted BD100 Rising Star the first year we did it, back in 2018. So great to see Lydia back here with us. And uh, I guess sort of when we launched the BD100, it was to put the spotlight on on great business development and, and bring us all closer together. So feels a little bit ironic that we've been able to sort of get more regularly close together in lockdown but I think it's been uh, it's been great as well to sort of see a real buzz building around the business development community I think we've seen other events happening we've seen the IPA doing some great stuff we've seen lots of stuff on LinkedIn uh, Katie Street is a, a BD100 member as well did a did a great session last week looking at future of new business uh, and also I even read the first ever new business magazine today, uh, something called The Goods. Uh, so lots of stuff happening within the community, which I think is really good to see. Uh, and, and today, as I said, obviously having a couple of uh, client side speakers as well is brilliant because um, I think it's so important that we don't operate in an echo chamber. Uh, it's always crucial to try and understand, uh, I guess, what, what the client's thinking and what, what they really want. Um, so it's brilliant to have uh, Seb uh, Bardin from uh, Cleanopedia uh, at Unilever joining us today, uh, who's also had some great experience working with the likes of Sony, Symantec, uh, and, and Shell. Uh, and then also we've got Tony Miller, marketing director of WW. We're told not to mention the, uh, the Weight Watchers name, but hey, it's uh, probably killed that one for later. Um, but Tony's also got some great experience working with both uh, sort of brand uh, at, at sort of uh, WW and Walt Disney and, and previously agencies. And I think sort of fairly recently started at WW, so has, has probably had to do his induction uh, during lockdown. So um, I'm sure there'll be some great insights for, for everyone to share. Uh, and, and I guess the topic today we're anchoring uh, this particular sessions on is looking at agency and brand relationships, how they've had to adapt, what learnings we can take forward, uh, and, and sort of any general advice and tips for, for those of us doing new business. Um, I'll now pass you over to Ali to, uh, to kick off the discussion. Thanks, Jody. Appreciate that. What a, what an introduction that was as well. And um, everyone, can we just show our appreciation for Jody Osmond with a round of applause? Thank you very much. One one clap I heard there. Um, <laughs> thanks so much, guys, for joining. Um, this is the BD sessions. First point: the round of applause. If you've not done one of these before, we go British Sign Language. We do this with our hands for people. Um, I'm going to assume you all knew that and a lot of you took issue with Jody's points, so, which I respect, so fair enough. Um, but when I say applause for the, the rest of the speakers, you now know what to do if you didn't already. Um, Jody made the points there, what we're going to do here. We've got three fantastic speakers for you talking about all things relationships in this current climate. It's going to be ex excellent. I'm looking forward to hearing them speak. And after they've each had their moment in the spotlight, we're going to go on to our Q&A section. We'll be hosted by my fabulous compatriots, my partner in crime, the wonder of the Wirral, Mr. Bramwell Johnson. Bramwell, do you want to take us through the Q&A briefly? Very briefly, I will, Ali. Thank you for that tremendous build-up. Um, I'm Director of Content at Propeller, by the way, uh, and I used to be a journalist at Market Week, so I've got some credentials for putting on the interviewer's jacket. Uh, and this is only the second time I've worn a jacket in 12 weeks. Uh, I do feel booted and suited is going to be a phrase that disappears in the English language pretty soon, but I'm trying to keep standards up. Anyway, I'll be running the Q&A, uh, and I've got a, a fistful of questions I'd love to put to our guests, but I really want the questions to come from you, you the attendees. You know, it, it's a great chance to pick their brains, get some insights from some real experts. So if you've got a question, put it into the, into the chat, and I'll try and channel as many of your questions as I can. I really do, I strongly advise you to take advantage of this opportunity. All right, Ali, do you want to lead us into the presentations? Sounds good, Bramwell. Well, thank you very much. He's worn the jacket twice, but still no trousers. That's the rule here. Um, so <laughs> you can put your question in the chat at any point. Please do, if you've got anything you want, Bramwell, to ask the speakers later. The other thing is, we do like to give back here at the BD sessions. So we've got a charity. It is Mind Again. If you tap your phone with the QR code there, you get your camera out. It will take you through to where you can pay two quid, less than the price of a cup of coffee, to mind we'd like to get to 100 pounds today so don't fail us on that one two pound we've got 74 people in the chat right now two pound is the minimum you can give more so we can get to 100 quid today so that's all the ad covered we now go to our first of the three 
exquisite speakers we've got today. Now, she's been mentioned already. It is Lydia Smith, who is new business director at MNC Saatchi London, and of course, was the rising star winner of the 2018 BD100. What's the prize for winning the BD100 rising star? Well, you get to appear on a Zoom call years later. So thank you so much for joining, Lydia. When you're ready, please take it away. Oh, hi. Thanks for that intro. Hi, everyone. Um, as Ali said, I'm Lydia. I'm new business director at MNC Saatchi. Um, so today my focus is really going to be on um, the new business context and mainly just taking you through where I've seen the key changes and challenges that we've had to overcome during these sort of extraordinary times. Um, and I guess the, the first for me is the important thing is just to set out the context of the industry at the minute, just so we're all starting from the same base. Um, I mean, industry stats are saying that we've got, I think, one inquiry a week at the minute coming in for most agencies from a new business front. Um, I would say we're probably uh, more lucky than that at the minute. We've got around two to three, um, but I'm a big believer in creating your own luck. And there's a lot of changes and ways we've navigated and flexed to make sure that we're creating those opportunities and continue to feed in that pipeline, which um, I'll take you guys through without giving away too much of our <laughs> secrets. Um, but I guess the key starting point for me, um, and when I was asked to do this panel, is the idea of um, you know what, what is new business. And for me, that's the, it's the beating heart of the agency. It sits at the center. Um, it's crucial um, and it's really visible when you're in that office environment. Um, you know, it's the late night pizzas, it's the briefings, it's the printer not working two minutes before, all the, all the positives, all the negatives. Um, but uh, it, it's, it's one thing that's really hard to replicate in a um, virtual world. And to be honest, that's what I've seen over the last few months has been a real important role of mine as a new business director to make sure that we're, we're continuing to keep that energy and thriving off that and feeding the pipeline through that. Um, so obviously there's a lot of different ways that um, new business has been affected um, across the business, but I'm going to focus on three today um, that I think will be um, most helpful for you guys and hopefully you'll be able to take some learnings from it. Um, so the first way that we've had to change and adapt is um, ultimately how we prospect. Um, so I guess to set the scene in 2020 from an MC Saatchi perspective, uh, we started the year um, with the wind in our sails, we we're fresh from our merger with Leader. Um, and we had a really clear proposition and direction of where we were going. So it was a really exciting time and there was an, a, an accessible energy going around the building. Um, we'd written up our strategy in Q4, um, so January was set to be a really good time for us. Um, so all we had to do was sort of go out and tell the world our plan and to make them listen. Um, I guess when we got there, we turned around, the world had completely changed. Um, fast forward three months, it's a world that is in lockdown, completely shut off, doesn't want to talk to anyone and needs to focus on their own priorities which obviously as a new business director is a challenging time. Um, so I guess the key thing here is um, what we actually found is that we didn't have to change our um, objectives. We just had to change our strategy. So the key thing for us was, you know, where we wanted to get to, um, where we started the year from and where we wanted to get to um, remained the same, but the path just had to be um, more fluid and we had to adapt and change. Um, and a key way of doing that really was making sure that there was a, um, a lot more work done upfront. So investing time into making sure the contacts were going after we have actually something meaningful to say and we did that through a lot of ways um, but one of the key ones was as the minute the sort of pandemic started and we went into lockdown we created a sort of strategic tool which is a in the form of a response barometer so it's a strategic tool we can literally point at any brand and from that gain the insights um, and market trends and then take that to the marketeers as a form of this we can this, this is how we could help it also helped us really sense check before we went to speak to them if we thought we could help um, which I, th I can't sort of stress enough really in this time. I think that's been a really important learning. You know, you can't sort of go out on a whim here. It has to be that you're adding value. It's an extremely stressful time. Marketeers are running at 150 miles per hour. And that was a really important thing to us. Um, and it's how we changed just to make sure we were taking into consideration the priorities that the CMOs now have and how that's changed. Um, and, and that was mainly just through, as I said, starting the conversation with what is the business challenge, not the advertising challenge. And then we could then work out if, if we could have value and where we could. So it was making sure our time and investment was spent in places that we could actually make a difference, um, which obviously benefits both us and the client. Um, so I guess that the key learning from that was just, um, it was a real good stress test for our business plan. Um, I would say that if you're sitting there feeling like your business plan was blown out the water, then there is a high possibility it was more tactical and reactive. Um, so next year, you might want to think about the strategies you put in place for that, because for us, it's been a really helpful backbone and allowed us to move at pace and create those um, strategic tools. Um, and I also think fluidity is a really important part of that. So being open to new opportunities, um, looking at brands that are thriving and surviving, there have been, you know, new um, engagements for us, which probably wouldn't have come up if there wasn't the pandemic, but it's helped us see how we can help other brands alike. Um, and that's been really interesting. Um, a second way we've had to change a new business is um, how we analyze an opportunity. 
Um, so I'm sure every agency folk on here will have seen the uh, increase of no budget disclosed briefs. Um, and I think, you know, it ultimately just comes down to there being less certainty in the marketplace at the minute, which is understandable. Um, marketeers are being expected to run um, very fast and have everything in place for lockdown being lifted and at times with no budget allocated. And I think at this time, it's really put the onus back onto agencies to make sure that we are um, really taking responsibility on what we go after and how we go after it. And this is obviously to protect resource, time and investment, but it's also mainly to protect our people. Um, you know, the days are longer. Zoom allows for no sort of commuting time or thinking time. Um, and I think it's, it's really important that if you're going to put people on, on a pitch and you're going to go after something, then you're making sure that you, the odds are really in your favor and you can really add something meaningful to that conversation. Um, so I guess my, my job has definitely during this pandemic become much more about making sure we're not going after those red herrings and we're tightening up our criteria, holding each other eternally accountable for that. Um, and, and again, that obviously all links back to having that strong plan from the beginning with those objectives really clear, um, which helps help steer the boat. Um, and then on my final point um, of how we've had to change is mainly how we pitch. So, you know, I mean, anyone who's ever been part of a pitch team, there's that really lovely spirit and dynamic that just comes with it. Um, everyone sort of wants to be part of it um, and it's, it's excitement. Um, and obviously that's very hard to replicate in this sort of world. And that's ultimately because, you know, the choreography has changed, um, you know, from the rapport, the meeting and reception to walking up into a lift, um, the making the cup of teas and how far have you come from today and just those desperately trying to find those connections are just really hard now. Um, and also even timings of pitches, um, you know, they used to be 90 minutes, they're now 45. Um, and everyone's very prompt and um, there's sort of none of the niceties and, you know, just naturally that human interaction has gone from them. Um, you know, it's a bit like when you're in a room and you know the pitch is going well. When you walk out that room, um, there's an amazing energy and you almost know. And obviously it's really hard to get that going when you're not physically in the room. So I guess the two ways we've changed that during this pandemic and how we've managed that um, is through casting and team structure. So for us, casting has become really um, different. Um, we have to put someone in, in front of the camera <laughs> um, who are happy to talk almost into a black hole in Zoom. We have had pictures where clients haven't turned on their Zoom cameras. Um, and obviously you're not getting the smiles and nods from the clients or alternatively from your team members. So you've got to um, really be comfortable in that space and be able to really stay focused um, for, 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 the, um, for, the, for the meeting. And that's a really important point. And, you know, it's also people who can create that culture of a team virtually. So and, and make people feel like united in this situation. Um, and also someone who can articulate themselves, obviously, um, much quicker than before. They've now got 45 minutes, not 90. So it's, it's a very different skill set we're looking for now um, and, and how we put people and cast them. Um, and on to my second point, it was uh, the structure of the teams. What we have seen is, you know, normally we would have be sitting in a room. Our office is all sort of glass offices and stuff. So, you know, you'd look across and think, oh, that person can have a good insight, let's get them involved. And obviously there's been less opportunity to do that. Um, but I think in some ways this has um, made us more successful. We have instead have much tighter, smaller teams. It is so clear what everyone's role is and responsibility. Um, you know, again, with everyone in back-to-back -back Zooms, we can't really afford to miss out on someone didn't have a chance to action what they said they would. Um, so it, we have noticed a real tighter team mentality. And with that, I think there's been this real sense of empowerment, which has been fantastic. So we've seen, um, junior members of the agency, for example, really stepping up into that role um, and feeling this sense of, um, you know, that they have autonomy in what they're doing, which I, I think is a, a really great learning. And I hope one that we managed to continue um, it, even post pandemic, whenever that is. Um, so so they're, they're my three points of where I think we've really been um, challenged and how we've changed and flexed. Um, and I'd just like to finish on, I guess, my, my two main points on how I think the new business landscape will look moving forward. Um, so, you know, as we've all seen, um, sort of gone are the days of uh, retained briefs and um, retainer clients. I think, you know, project base is obviously the future, but I think the pandemic will massively accelerate this for us. Um, and, and that's, you know, it's, it's, it's obvious, the speed of response will become a really important factor. I think gone are the days of um, three month, you know, brand purpose briefs. I think it will be a case of, you know, short term turnarounds and agencies who are going to be successful post pandemic need to start setting up and getting the tools in place to be able to respond to those briefs at speed. Um, but I also think there's a really exciting opportunity, um, you know, in the next sort of coming weeks, I think anyone who, any brand that goes to pitch, there'll be a really serious consideration. Um, you know, stability is hitting everyone. And if you don't need to rock the boat at the minute, I think a lot of marketeers are deciding not to. Um, but I do think 2021 will be one of those really exciting moments of, um, you know, everyone taking a step back, breathing, looking at what they have, and then working out, is this still the skill sets we need? And I think just to leave on the last point, um, you know, obviously with anything as, the application of pressure creates cracks um, or it shows how strong a foundation is. 
And I think for agencies to um, be successful in 2021, they really need to be prepared for both challenges um, to not only survive, but ultimately thrive. Thank you very much, Lydia Smith. A round of applause from everyone there. Oh, mm -hmm. look at the hands going. Thank you so much, Lydia. Brilliant. Talking of post pandemic in 2021, I can't even get my mind there. It's incredible, but here's hoping. <laughs> Good point you made there as well about that feeling of rush when you come out of a pitch and you tell me, I do miss it. What I do to replicate is every time I finish a Zoom call, I celebrate in my own room and have a pint. It's very tough if you have morning meetings to finish the day. But thank you so much, Lee. I really appreciate that. And thank you as well to Katie Howell, a regular here, um, for your question and to Anna Price for your question in the chat. That will be noted by Bramwell and hopefully we can get them asked in the Q&A section. So just another reminder, the mind here, you can donate two pounds less than the price of a cup of coffee with just scanning it with your camera phone. And now we go on to our fabulous second speaker. His name is Seb Bardin, and he is Global Head of Acquisition and Marketing for Cleanopedia at Unilever. Seb, when you're ready, please take it away. So I, I believe there's a muting issue, but I think that will be resolved. Um, I, I like your suspense, a showman at best. Seb, when you're ready, take it away. Sorry, I think I need to put a pound in a, you know, on a mute jar. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm Seb and I'm looking after um, acquisition and marketing at uh, Kinipedia, which is owned by Unilever. So it's a website providing tips and advisors on how to clean your house. And, and for today, I think um, I would like to talk more about the experience and the ways of working within the situation uh, compared to pre previously with, you know, with new partners, but also with existing partners. And I think, you know, what's happening with a lockdown, it makes us question the way we are working. In my previous role at Sony, um, we were working already with agencies in different countries, in, in the UK, in Sweden, in Germany. But we always find a way out. Oh, let's commute for for pitch. Let's go there for you know for an end of year report. Or always find excuse to you know to you know just to to, to be to have a face to face uh, meeting. But uh, what's happening now with uh, the lockdown? What I really find interesting it's more how we've managed to adapt our ways of working, but also how it improve our relationship with uh, our partners. And you know, uh, and technology has a big role to play as part of it. So uh, I remember, like a few, uh, even just a few months ago, we you know we couldn't get on the same network uh, as our partners because the one is on Teams, another one is on Slack, another one is on different uh, collaboration tool and. The fact that um, some of the technology providers like Slack allows us to do this makes um, the collaboration, uh, a deeper collaboration, not only in terms of uh, you know, work, but also in terms of transparency, uh, to know what we are doing um, and, and, you know, and, and get things done uh, during those hard uh, times. And I think, you know, what I would say, I think uh, technology really helped us uh, a lot in terms of, um, collaboration not only with you know with the likes of SharePoint with the likes of Google Suite but also uh, it helped us um, have more trust and uh, I would say um, get a deeper uh, relationship with our partners uh, because at the end of the day we are all on the same boat because you know people now have to be you know to work flexible time have a work-life balance kids childcare to take uh, to look after during uh, this period and and what we found out is by using uh, you know just a simple but simple notification your status on 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 the on the on those tools i'm away right now or i'm i'm live i'm working on specific project really help us uh, to get things done and also to move uh, forward with all our you know campaigns and different activities uh, this, uh, this has been a you know big uh, positive uh, impact on the way we are working now and and again is after you know 20 2021 after the situation you know we will be questioning uh, the fact that uh, do we need to commute to x part of london to x part of the uk or x part of the world just to have a meeting with your partners um and so on um but uh, i would also what i also find interesting during uh, this time is um of course you know we have challenges in terms of budget in terms of you know reprioritizing our ways of 
you know, our, our business objectives. And I think uh, what, you know, we, we had to ask quite a lot uh, to our agencies is how can we, you know, be agile and lean in the way that we are doing things. You know, you always, at the moment, you have to review your strategy 380, uh, 360 degrees. And, and also you're expecting this flexibility from the partners uh, you know, to you know, to be as agile and as lean as you know what we're expecting, and also to deliver um, what we want to, to achieve with a business objective. Um, and yeah, I think uh, on on that on that on that topic, I think um, again we we've seen also you know that uh, our partners have you know has been onboarding this approach uh, of you know um, understanding uh, that you know it's a completely brand new. Uh, brand new reality, and 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 again is um, you know we are, we had a lot of discussion about reviewing the, the terms and conditions, and and I think you know it was quite uh, you know quite quite good to see that you know uh, they were open to you know to revise you know the scope of work. Um, in some cases, we needed to have some uh, some local uh, resources from the agency in uh, X Y uh, countries, and we managed to make uh, to to, um, to amend uh, the scope of work to to, uh, to make sure that uh, we can get uh, all the support required during uh, during this time. And and I guess um, another part uh, which I also find quite interesting dur during this time is around the new business. So how to work with new partners during this time, and especially you know when you are starting to get uh, un tens to a dozen of uh, requests in your uh, inbox from LinkedIn, from you know biz uh, new business to uh, asset asset management completely unrelated to, to marketing. So I think um, you know uh, in again. A few months ago, you know, when you are starting to build relationship uh, to, and build a trust with any potential partners, having a face-to-face -face discussion is really key uh, to, to get this in place. Um, and then, you know, you start you know, uh, with, with different approach, whether we are going on a project-based approach, whether, and then, you know, moving to a test and learn, then probably to a more longer-term relationship. And, um, and I think uh, now what is quite interesting is, I guess on my side, and I need to rely more on peers' recommendations, but also on um, on uh, word of mouth. So you know, making sure that uh, we go, we are going to work with those guys. You know, um, who else have done it? You know, uh, any recommendations? So it's I think um, I would say I have asked more um, uh, more information and more recommendation from my from my peers than before. While you know. You know, it was just easy and you know you have a, you have a solution that can help us and let's go ahead and, and do something so i think uh, this is i think quite something that you know uh, is now part of a new reality um and you know that we we need to rely more on um on this type of recommendations um yeah i just checking the time uh i think it's you know this said, don't don't feel like you need to do that you've Smashed it in, in your time. Round of applause for Seb, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, what a timing. Excellent. Thank you so much. That's kind. And you're right, we need to rely on word of mouth and peers. You're not wrong on that. So everyone, because you're enjoying this session so much, please tell everyone in your community to come to the next one, which will be the 2nd of July. More details on that later. But thank you so much, Seb. That was brilliant. Our second speaker, who was just as excellent in the first, equally so, no favoritism at all. So now we go on to our third speaker, but just before the final reminder, guys, two pound for mind, put your phone up to this QR code and you'll be able to donate less than the price of a cup of coffee to a very important mental health charity. So please do that before you leave today. But finally, our speaker who I'm looking forward to very much, not more than the other two, but exactly the same, is Tony Miller, Marketing Director at WW. Tony, when you are ready, please take it away. Excellent. Thank you very much. Good to be here with all of you. Nice to see some familiar faces in the audience as well. So good to see a few friends out there. Um, happy to be here today. And I think just in terms of just what um, Lydia and Seb have said, just kind of be re reiterating some of those themes uh, uh, from my perspective. Uh, so to set some context, I did just start my job on the 2nd of April after all of the offices were closed and everybody was in lockdown. 
And so I've met my team and my agencies uh, like this. So all I know about them is just a grid of faces and sounds um, uh, to try to get personality and character across um, is no mean feat, but hopefully uh, it, the, the two months in, uh, we're working uh, towards that way. So um, that's been a challenge, obviously, just to try to get to understand and know people. So how, how you can read people and, 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 and personalities and intent, I think, is, is quite interesting. So utilizing other um, communication uh, skills um, is really important. But I think, for me, uh, it boils down to three things, um, and they all are kind of crossover, but flexibility uh, and creativity, I think, go hand in hand when you're working with your agency partners. Uh, and I'll bring some examples into that in just a minute. I think uh, added to that is agility. So we talked about moving at speed. I think all of the plans that were put in place before my arrival have completely changed just because of the nuances that uh, this pandemic has placed upon all of us, not only from how we work and get work done, but from our business strategy and actually what we need to focus on uh, as a priority. Um, those have all shifted. So really making sure that the agencies we're working with are agile, uh, that we can work at speed, uh, my motto that I love is fast game is a good game. So obviously not just to be fast and furious uh, 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 for the sake of it, but just really smartly looking at how can we actually cut process down and um, approval thing uh, and speed on approvals up. And the third thing is just overall partnership in terms of that back to that being really transparent and being really honest with each other uh, and how that how you have to adapt to that over um, a zoom uh, relationship. So um, I think examples of flexibility and creativity for me um, again, we had like probably a lot of brands um, unfortunately had to, to cut budget and it wasn't um, a, 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 a quite sizable budget, I think uh, just to be safe. so, um, our example, we ended up having, or I inherited actually, walked into um, on the 2nd of April, uh, the week before, 25% of my marketing budget had already been given back to the business. Um, and so that causes a lot of uh, questions and um, issues around what do we do, um, what are our priorities, because my targets haven't really changed. We've slightly kind of adjusted what we need to do, but uh, for uh, the, the, the world I live in, it, we live and die by um, sign up. And so obviously sign up uh, to our programs is affected drastically uh, by the situation we're living in. Uh, luckily, I think we're seeing the other side of that. I think we're seeing like a lot of in brands that are in the industry around health and wellness, whether that be exercise equipment or just kind of uh, uh, food recipes and just the mix of all of that are seeing an increase. So I think, you know, this pandemic actually is working uh, to our advantage in terms of how we can communicate and resonate as a as a proposition, a real proposition for our consumers. So that's been good. But I think at the beginning it is about working with how do you, with, with a budget cut and a and a and a plan already cemented for the year and targets already confirmed that needed to be hit. How do you just rip that apart and change in a matter of a week to two weeks and really then continue to work at pace? Um, and I'm pleased to say, you know, the agencies that I um, uh, uh, work with today have been able to rise to that occasion and actually be quite flexible in their response uh, to those demanding needs. And it's, I think, understanding the nuances of those demands uh, and just being able to uh, really respond in um, an authentic way and being creative. That's the other piece to this around how we can solve um, our decisions and um, still reach targets. So as an example, you know, there's, there's things that I've had to cut out, but, um, uh, and teams that have already been built around a structure for what I think of from an agency we needed. So we already had kind of siloed structures and teams built around a strategy that was already in place. Well, we've ripped up that strategy and I may need to tap into teams and resources that weren't part of my retainer or weren't part of the contract. So the, the, the agency's been able to be really flexible and understand that um, on, um, that need and be able to, pr to bring in talent that potentially wasn't on our roster or our retainer and swap things in and out in a really agile way. So that kind of, you know, is another example of 
how you can be able to respond at speed um, and understand our demands as a, as a, and understand our pressures as a, uh, a business um, and, and what we're, the pressure we're under as a brand to deliver, but not to go, a, 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 that goes hand in hand with me as a brand understanding agency pressure too, because I don't know what's happening in and around your client base outside of what I actually bring into your business. And, you know, I'm not alone probably in brands having to cut back. And so I know the pressure on agencies to be able to uh, deliver and maintain profit and maintain staff is a real um, uh, issue and demand. And we need to be able to respect that as much as you need to be able to respect what we need from a flexibility uh, standpoint. And then, you know, it comes back to um, a partnership and it's this whole idea of, how we work together and solve problems. I'm, there's, no, there's no room or no time for agencies to go away and um, have workshops themselves and strategize and come up with decisions based on a brief. I'm more interested in, in, in true collaboration and being part of those conversations so that it cuts down the rounds of, of meeting times and internal uh, reviews and drafts after drafts where if we, if we give you a brief, giving you time to think about it and come up with ideas, but instead of spending time to um, have a polished presentation back, involve me and my team in those conversations so that we can actually get to an answer, get to a creative solution quicker uh, together. Because uh, I think a lot of times, you know, agencies want to deliver their best work, which is great because we do want um, your best work, but I think sometimes at a detriment of time. And it is under this understanding of, Time is of the essence and, you know, a new normal is actually how do we actually become one team? So it's a partnership. It's not my agency needs to deliver this for me and I expect my agency to do that. Um, I expect us to come up with a solution together and I expect us to figure out ways to, that, that we need to be more optimal about our budget to actually get what we need at the end of the day. Um, and then just to round up on, um, it, 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 it's about honesty and, and, and personality. I just think, you know, we all are under huge stress, not just from a, um, a business point of view and client point of view, but personally, everybody's under a huge amount of stress in terms of what they have to juggle, whether that is homeschooling their children or sharing workspace with their partner or um, uh, taking care of a new puppy like me that I got um, uh, during lockdown. Um, there's a lot of other stuff that is actually behind the pressures of nine to five back-to-back -back Zooms. When do you answer your emails? How do you get back to people? How do you manage all of that? And it's just allowing for that flexibility in people's lives and understanding, I think. And just, we're, at the end of the day, we're all humans. We all want to do the best thing for each other. We all want to kind of achieve the, the, the best at the end of the day, and we need to allow uh, realism to kind of uh, be part of that and, and, and true understanding. So I think that's, that's me, done. Thank you so 